Wow. Oh my goodness, these colors are amazing. Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my Fluid Art channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. So today is Juneteenth here in America, and I'm doing a Juneteenth inspired pour. Now, what is Juneteenth, you ask? Well, for those of you not in America, or for those of you who don't realize that this is now a federal holiday, Juneteenth is when we celebrate um, June 19th, 1865, which is when the last group of black slaves down in Texas heard that they had been freed. So this is something definitely worthy of celebration. In America, we are all about freedom and liberty. All men are created equal. That's in our Declaration of Independence. So what a wonderful chance to celebrate. We all are free here in America, not just white people. So I've got some lovely colors here from black to white and a whole bunch of browns in the middle. And I'm going to be doing a straight pour with those colors. And then I have some metallic red, white, and blue, and I'm going to be using a split cup to add some ribbons of those colors over top to symbolize freedom. So I'm very excited about this. Let's make a painting. All right, let's get started with the straight pour. So this is a 12 by 12 inch canvas, and I have a silicone cup here. It's about, it, well, it's measured up to eight ounces. It probably holds more like 10 or 12. So I'm gonna be filling it close to full here. All of my paint colors, uh, the, the brands and the mixing information is in the video description. It's all mixed with Floetrol, American Floetrol and water. And my black and my white are both house paints. House paint, when it's layered up in a cup like this, can often add a lot of those nice natural cells, the kind of clouds like you see in a, like a Ceramac Galaxy pour. So I'm using two house paints, and then I've got three different metallics, which also can create a lot of cells. So I'm hoping for lots of amazing stuff. Um, yeah, let's layer up this cup. I'm not going to stack it super carefully. Well, I don't know, maybe I will. It's always nice to see a really pretty stacked cup. I don't know if I'm going to do this as a wandering straight pour where it kind of moves around or pretty much just straight in the middle. I think it's going to depend on how the colors, how they pop up. We'll see. The other great thing about white house paint, I use semi-gloss interior house paint. It's lighter than other white paints, which means if you're stacking a cup, you'll have a better chance of it uh, sitting on top of your paints instead of sinking down. White, in general, is a dense color, and so it'll often sink. If you have your white paint sinking, try white house paint. It's lighter, and it often will give you a better stack. This one cup, this is different from my other ones. This was actually mixed up for a bloom pour. So it's mixed with the bloom pouring medium, the house paint and polycrylic. And then I added Floetrol to that to make it more like these other paints. So I'm excited to see how that one turns out because it's always nice to be able to make your own metallic paints for using in multiple different styles. Okay, this is probably enough paint right here. That's over eight ounces. Yeah, eight, nine. 
and I think that'll be plenty. Usually for a 12 by 12 you want at least 9 ounces of paint, so this is 9 and I've got extra that I can use to cover the edges if need be. Okay, this will be fun. I forgot to show you my paint consistency. Uh, it flowed very well. It was thin, but it did kind of stack up. It, it made a mound. It wasn't really thick, like a mound on a mound. So it is thin. It's not really, really thin like a Dutch pour, and I don't know that it's even quite as thin as my micro swipes, but it is not thick. It's definitely not as thick as a bloom. Anyway, let's pour this out. Wow. Oh my goodness, these colors are amazing. Wow. Okay, so that was that was much more like a galaxy style, you know, kind of up and down because when you're when you're low down to the canvas it makes like the colors flow out and when you pull it up they they shoot through and that's what makes lots of crazy cells and they just blend in a really beautiful way. I have tons of air bubbles in here from that, so let me torch and then we'll stretch it out. That is so, so pretty. I don't know that my center is gonna end up in the center. If I wanted that, I'd spin the whole thing, but I wanna give it a bit more of an organic kind of feel. Do I, do I wanna spin it? I don't know. That's so pretty. I think I wanna spin this um, because uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna put it on the spinner and I'll stretch it a little bit and then I'll add the ribbons of paint and then I'll stretch it some more because the middle's really pretty. Just everything about this is gorgeous. I love it. A lot of you have asked me about this spinner. So this was a uh, wooden Lazy Susan which I bought from a craft vendor at a, at a festival. And then I took off the top, the round wooden top, and my husband helped me cut this wooden X out of a piece of plywood, and we screwed that in. And so it's like 20 by 20, so it can hold nice big canvases. And because it's an X, the, the push pins that I have at the bottom underneath my canvas, they can, um, it's like they hook right on to the edges, and as you spin it, the canvas doesn't fly off because it's being held on torch it again. The torching does two things. Uh, it brings up some little air bubble cells, but it also removes the air bubbles that might stop the paint from flowing and create strange lines in your paint. So that would be one reason to torch before you stretch instead of after. That's so beautiful. All right, little spin here. Whoa, okay. So that's stretching fast. Love it so much. Before we get too far, let me layer up my red, white, and blue split cup here. This is a silicone split cup from Let's Resin. I really like the silicone split cups because even though they're, <laughs> they're a little bit wobbly when you hold them, they're so easy to clean because you can you can get into the nooks and crannies. I have some that are like 3D printed hard plastic and I just don't like using them, but I really like these. And if you wanna get a set for yourself, there's a link in my description box. Okay, red, white, and blue. These are all metallics. Whew, I almost don't wanna spoil this, but I have to go with the theme. But maybe I'll go with this color scheme again because that's really pretty. I'm going to start off the canvas so that I see what I have before I go across.
Okay. Yep. I'm trying to decide if I want anything crossing the middle. I don't think I do. I think I want it more around the edges than the middle. Okay, that should be enough. I don't want to cover up the whole thing. Let's spin it again. Wow. It's so pretty. Okay, so I, I need to get my corners covered and I need to spin to make sure that I don't have too much paint on the canvas. Okay, corners are covered, at least for the most part. So there is this section here that does not have a lot of detail in it. Unfortunately, a lot of the really pretty stuff on the outer edges spun off. The middle's still really nice. I'm just wondering if I need to add a little bit more of the ribbon right here. Let me torch and see if I can bring anything up there. Uh, because there's not a lot of design right here, this middle feels a little bit like strange. We've got beautiful design out here. Um, I think I'm going to bring in one more, one more ribbon and bring it closer to the middle and across here. And I hope that isn't a mistake. I think it'll be good though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that. One more gentle spin, perhaps. I really don't want to lose too much. Yeah. Okay. I'm really happy with this. I don't think there's anything more I want to do. So, let me figure out which side is up, and then I'll give you a close-up. Okay, here we go. So this turned out so beautiful. Let me just show you those cells. So this is all no silicone. This is all the paint interacting with the other paints. Having Floetrol in the mix helps for sure. Having house paint as a couple of the colors, that helps for sure. Having metallics in there helps, but a lot of it is just kind of luck. You know, what does the paint want to do today? And then here's that center, very celly but swirly. It's cool. And then look at those. You can see how shimmery they're going to be. Those red, white, and blue ribbons. I wish we had a bit more, you know, big and small, but we do have some thin ones down here, so that's cool. And I do think that the, the one cutting through the middle there does help to balance everything out. So I'm really happy with this. Let me show you how it looks when it's dry. Here it is. It dried really, really well. No shifting, no warping, no bugs flying in. I just love those cells so much. Oh, it's it's really pretty. And then obviously those metallics, super shimmery. They're going to look even better when this is varnished. But you can see how shiny they are. That center is really cool. And then down here also lots of detail. So it ended up really, really cool. Uh, this is a very abstract piece for sure, but I love the symbolism in it, and I loved having this vision come to life. So let me know down in the comments, guys. What did you think? Have you ever done a straight pour like this? Have you ever poured ribbons out on top of a painting like this? Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you again next Monday for another fun painting video. Bye!